Welcome to the Enlight online tutorial series. Today, we're going to discuss the best practices in creating global profiles as well as scheduling techniques. We'll also examine one of the most common profiles and schedules used in the Enlight network, overriding exterior lighting. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to recall what a global profile is and what they're used for. You'll also be able to demonstrate the best practices for creating and implementing them. By conceptualizing how you want the space to operate outside of normal operation, determining which behavior should be set as the default settings and which should be set with the profile, and creating time schedules determining when these specific profiles are prescribed to run, knowing this will help you implement these to meet regional codes or any other desired sequences of operation. A couple things to note before we get started. When we use the term lights, we mean any N-Light output device, like an N-Light enabled fixture, relay, power pack, or equivalent N-Light air device, Similarly, when we use the term switch or wall pod, we mean any end light device that's issuing switch commands on, off, or dim. These can come from things like end pod M series devices or, say, a switch channels set up on an end pod touch. You'll need a basic understanding of the end light network and sensor view software. If you need more information, there will be additional training information at the end of this presentation. Or, if you'd like even more information on what you see in these videos or to enroll in any of our instructor-led events where we learn about these topics in a hands-on environment, please use the QR codes to the right to visit Acuity Academy. Feel free to pause the video now. Let's quickly recap global profiles. They can affect devices across the whole network. These changes can range from simply one device to every single device in the network. They can be controlled by a time or astronomical schedule. They are stored on and run from the Eclipse, so remember that global profiles are only available on a fully networked system. If the profile is not on a time schedule, they'll need to be run from a scene controller on the network or directly from sensor view. And finally, remember that not only can profiles be used to change light levels, but we can change any setting of any device at any time. Here are a couple examples that are commonly used in in-light control systems and sometimes even required by code. Exterior lighting, utilizing a time of day or astronomical schedule, which is just sunrise and sunset for each day. Note that location information is critical here to have accurate sunrise and sunset times. Night lighting or egress, which basically tells specific lights in a space to remain on even when the area is vacant. This behavior is usually only in place after hours. And a daytime switch disable profile that disables the switches in common areas of schools or retail spaces during normal operating hours so people are prevented from using switches to turn the lights off. In order to understand some best practices around creating profiles, it's important to notice that global profiles in Enlight are not like other control systems out there. Many other systems are event-driven, where the user has to think about a sequence of events that they wish to occur at different points throughout the day and schedule these events in order. For example, a user will have to think, at 7 a.m., I want to turn the lobby lights on, then at 7.15, I want the exterior lights to turn off, then, etc., etc. So, scheduling these events would look something like this. This is not how profiles work in Enlight. We'll need to think about what we want to accomplish a little differently. Instead, think of the behaviors or operation you want certain devices, rooms, or areas to exhibit, and then when you want to see these behaviors. So, our examples from earlier might sound like, I want my exterior lights to be off from sunrise to sunset. Or, after hours, I want some specific fixtures throughout my building to stay on even if the space is unoccupied. I also want other lights to turn off quicker if the space is vacant. Or finally, I want to disable switches in common areas while school is in session. Once we know how we want the system to operate and when, we're ready to begin associating these behaviors with the settings we need to call out in our profile. When creating profiles, it's important to remember that since profiles are simply changing our current settings values, we need to decide which values should be saved as our default settings and which settings we want to only be changed with a profile. We could flip these and run the profile at an opposite time and achieve the exact same operation. Default settings should be programmed as if the control zones or rooms are not connected to the rest of the Enlight network. This ensures that the space operates as intended regardless of any time clock functionality and prevents the space from relying on the Eclipse or Gateway 2 for basic operation. The default settings also tend to be larger chunks of time throughout the day. We should use our profile for changing away from the usual operation of the space temporarily. Usually, these times occur after hours, 
but not all the time, and typically these are smaller time intervals. Let's use our exterior lighting example. If we thought about using a profile to run at night to override our exterior lights on, we would need to make our default setting of the lights override off for the daytime, right? But we don't want to program this way, because if for some reason, say the Eclipse lost power and the profile doesn't run, the lights will remain overridden off, leaving people in the dark once the sun goes down. Instead, we should leave the light's default override setting at normal, which is on, and use a profile to override the lights off during the daytime. This way, if the profile doesn't run for whatever reason, users will never be left in the dark. Now that we've figured out how to set up our settings, we can move on to building the schedules. There are many types of scheduling methods available, and remember, we can have multiple schedules for a single profile. Most are self-explanatory, but we'll go over the most common here in depth. You'll notice that they all consist of a start date and time, and can be set up to have a specific number of occurrences or to continue indefinitely. Daily schedules are just that. Profiles with daily schedules will run every single day. Note that these can be run overnight and also include Saturday and Sunday. Careful though, this means they will also end Saturday and Sunday, so if you're looking for a profile to run all weekend, you'll need to use once a week schedules. More than once a week schedules are similar to daily schedules, but specific days of the week can be selected. These are common for after hours profiles and spaces that are also unoccupied all weekend. Notice that Monday through Thursday are only selected, not Friday. This is because we would use a second schedule, a once a week schedule, that takes care of Friday night through Monday morning. Once a week schedules are typically used for running profiles all weekend, since starting on Friday and ending on Monday is still just one long occurrence per week. Now let's see what setting this up in SensorView would look like. We're going to continue using our exterior lighting profile as an example. As a reminder, these profiles are created under the Profiles tab. Click New to create a new profile. Select which devices you want to be included. And add the setting changes you wish to affect, in this case just the override setting to off. Remember, we can use as many settings in this list as we need to achieve the behavior we're looking for. Remember that when run, either from Sensor View, or from a scene controller, or on a schedule, the profile sends new current settings that we choose here to all the devices in the device tree that are selected with checkboxes. Also remember that all settings that are not specifically called out in the profile will revert to their default setting value, except for override, occupied bright level, and the correlated color temperature, since changing these settings has immediate effects on the lights in the space. Schedules will show up here, or they can be deleted if the profile is meant to be run from a button press on a scene controller. In our exterior lighting example here, we've chosen the profile to start at sunrise and end at sunset. This means that from sunrise to sunset, the two devices selected in the device tree will have their override value changed to override off, which turns the lights off. At sunset, when this profile expires, the device is instructed to revert to its default setting, which is normal, meaning that the lights will come back on. We could add more schedules with the new button if there were additional times we wanted these lights to be off. Remember, there can be multiple schedules for this single profile. We will discuss priority in a separate tutorial. Finally, name and save your profile. The name should be an indication of where and what the profile is doing. In this case, we're calling it Exterior Lights Off. The profile will be saved on the Eclipse or Gateway, and when successful, you will see the profile as synchronized here. If you see mismatched, that means that SensorView has a different version of the profile than the Eclipse does, so make sure to sync all to make sure SensorView and the Eclipse match. Once saved, we can navigate to the Schedules tab and expand our device tree until we can see devices or zones that have profiles associated with them. This tab is just a visualization tool where we can see all the various profiles that are set to run on schedules. We can see that our exterior lights off profile is now visible and we can see that it is scheduled to run today in the orange space. If we hover our mouse over the profile, it will give us the exact time window down to the minute when this profile is set to run. Since our start and end times are sunrise and sunset, we can see these exact times. Remember, for astronomical values, these will change every day. The white space on the schedule is simply when the devices are at their default settings values. 
And finally, we can use the arrows to cycle through the days to see when and where profiles may be running on specific days. Once we've verified our schedule is correct, we're done creating our profile. Thank you for watching our tutorial. You have just learned the best practices for creating and scheduling global profiles. Please reach out to Acuity Brands Technical Support at the phone number provided or use the links for more information. Keep an eye out for new content and feel free to send an email to acuitycontrolstraining at acuitybrands.com if there are any other topics you'd like to see. We'll see you soon.